Amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 from the King James text today reads, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. Amen. If you'll bow your heads with me a moment, let's once again go to the Lord in prayer as the Word of God is about to go forth. Father, once again, God, we come before you humbly. As the Word of God declares, it is our privilege as children of God to come boldly before the throne of grace. The Word of God today, Lord, is broken open, and within its pages we find the bread of life, the breath of life, sustenance for our soul. Lord, the preacher of the gospel is not but a speaker. And without the anointing of the Holy Ghost, every word that would proceed from my lips would be empty and vain. We need to know God the anointing. And I ask, Lord, not only that you would anoint my lips, my heart, my thinking, but also, Lord, that you would anoint today the heart, the hearing of every hearer. Help every individual, God, today who is listening to receive the Word of God with gladness, to receive the Word of God with hope, but most importantly, to receive the Word of God with faith. That it might be a seed that falls upon good ground, that is able then to take root and to grow up healthy and whole. A plant God that brings glory and honor to you and to your name. Oh Master, today how we need to hear from heaven in this dark and dismal hour. How we need to hear from the Lord at this moment in time. Speak to me, speak through me. Speak, O oh God, to your people, for we need to hear from heaven. We ask it all in none other than Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. amen. Praise God and amen. Christians today who are not sleeping and many who profess Christianity at this hour are fast asleep. They don't realize that the political environment in our country today is a test run for the Antichrist. And it has proven one thing. The way that we see people reacting to politicians and political leaders, the way we see things happening in our world today, it's easy to see that the spirit of Antichrist, I am not claiming anyone on the political scene at this moment, is in fact the Antichrist. I personally do not believe that. But I do believe that the spirit of Antichrist is wildly at work through certain individuals. And we have seen in recent months and years that the spirit of Antichrist is very quickly and easily able to persuade even many who would profess themselves to be Christians. It's amazing how when you're getting what you want, uh, all of a sudden it doesn't matter how you got it. It's amazing how many Christians today are willing uh, to score what they consider a political win in their column. You know, one for Christians, quote unquote. And it doesn't matter to them that there's a lying, conniving, evil, deceptive, divisive individual at the political uh, apex in our nation who is doing these things and using every crooked means, every foul, ungodly means possible. And yet they want to say, oh, but you know, this is how God works. No, it isn't. God is able to elevate 
godly people, righteous people. Righteous does not require that you be godly. The Word of God said, If the righteous scarcely be seen, then where shall the sinner and the ungodly stand? So uh, righteousness and godliness are not synonymous. Righteousness means simply to do right. You can be a person who is not a believer in Jesus Christ, who is not a professing Christian, and still live a righteous life. You can still have a desire in your heart to do things right, to treat your neighbor right, to treat people you do business with right, to treat your family, your children, your wife, your husband, your spouse right. So it's not at all a requirement that you serve God or be a Christian to live a righteous life. Now righteousness will not get you into heaven as much as that might seem a fair exchange to many. The word of God said, for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast no one will stand in God's heaven and tell the Lord that they are there because they did right. Because they had a desire to do good things and right things. No, no one will stand in heaven straight, gay or otherwise with any bragging rights. Every believer that makes it to glory will look at the other believer and say by the grace of God I made it. Hallelujah. You know there's an old song that's sung primarily in the black church that says somehow I made it. Somehow I made it through it all God brought me through. I've, I've grown to not care for that song very much because I know how it's not somehow I made it. It's by God's grace I made it. Hallelujah. By God's grace I made it. Through it all, God brought me through. So if I ever sing that song in the future, you can bet that I'm going to sing it a little differently than it is traditionally sung. We are in a dark hour in our nation right now. Many people are stressed Many people are anxious. They say that many people in our country today are experiencing anxiety and psychological pressures that they have never experienced before under any administration in the history of our nation. I know certainly that I have never felt the pressures and the stresses that I feel today under this current demonic and devilish administration. We are two days away from an election. People are anxious. We don't know how the election will turn out. We certainly have hopes. But more than this, we have a man who occupies the White House today, who is so full of demons and evil influences that he thinks nothing, nothing, of stirring up trouble, inciting violence, even going so far from what I see as inspiring and setting off a full-blown civil war just so that he can remain in control of the levers of power. More than the election itself, many are deeply concerned over what may happen after the election. Even if things go the way that many of us, I dare say most of us, hope they will, we don't know what, we don't know what the foreign in interference is. We don't know how much of an influence foreign interference is going to have on our election. We don't know how much uh, efforts on the part of one party in our country to intimidate people, 
We don't know how far that intimidation is going to go. We don't know how far the suppression that is being engaged in by the Republicans might as well call a zebra a zebra instead of prancing around it. We don't know how far the suppression of the vote is going to go and how much of an effect that's going to have. But even if things go well and even if by some miracle and we pray that God will help our election to be legitimate and to be accurate and to reflect the will of the people, even if all that transpires, we don't know what's going to happen after the election. There are rumblings of potential violence. We're told that federal law enforcement agencies are gearing up and preparing themselves for violent outbreaks. Folks, I'm 55 years old. I have never seen such garbage in my life as what I'm seeing now. None of this has to happen. None of this is necessary. It is only because the person who occupies the White House is so evil and so vile that he literally cannot open his mouth without stirring up angst and anger and malice and violence division, none of these things are godly. And God uses none of these things. Right. What do we do? In the face of everything that is going on, in the face of all that's happening in our world and in our nation today, Lord, what on earth can we do? And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me this week. And he said to my heart, tell the people of God, trust me. Trust me. Whatever happens, however things go, whatever direction the future takes, trust me. Trust in the Lord, not partly, not slightly. But trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Boy, I'm going to tell you, the, if there's any problem we as human beings have, it is the tendency to try to explain everything. Oh, we've got to understand it. We've got to have an explanation that we can wrap our mind around. We've got to have an explanation that makes sense to us. But the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you and I today, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. It is not necessary that we understand why God does things the way God does things, nor is it necessary to understand what the destination may be and where it is that God is bringing us. We don't have to understand how it is that God is leading us. All we have to understand is that He's leading. Hallelujah. He has a purpose. The Word of God promises all things work together for good. To them that love God. Now those that don't love God, the very same things that benefit you and I may very well destroy them. I'm going to tell you a little secret, folks. The very things that people think are for our destruction. They don't like you and I. They don't like who we are. They don't like what we do or how we do it. And the very things that they think they're doing toward our destruction, because we're still people of God, because we're still people of faith, because we still are trusting in the Lord with all our hearts and not trying to lean and rely upon our own understanding. The very things that they mean for our destruction. You remember the story of Joseph? 
Joseph wound up being sold into slavery by his brothers. Oh, it would seem like a terrible circumstance. It would seem so horrible that his own family would turn on him and sell him into slavery in Egypt. And yet the day came when all of a sudden his family was in desperate need and there was no food in the land because of famine. And they had to go into Egypt in order to secure sustenance. And who should they find themselves standing before but one of Egypt's greatest leaders and authorities. And they're asking him for help. And they don't recognize him. They don't see any similarity in him. They don't seem to understand, hey, you're standing in front of your brother. The very guy you sold into slavery has become a very high up figure in Egyptian society. He has become very important and very powerful within Egyptian government. And when Joseph finally revealed himself to his brothers, and of course he he kind of put them through a little bit of a ringer first, but when he finally reveals himself to them, he said, what you meant for evil, hallelujah, God meant for good. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, children, I want to tell you today, what the people mean for evil against you and I, what the people mean for evil against LGBT people, what they mean for evil against people of color, what they mean for evil against uh, people from south of the American border, those people have people within them who are Christ followers. Those people are people within them who are people of faith, who are people of God. Every one of those groups has people that love the Lord and are trying their best to live for God and to serve Him. And I've got news for you today. The promises of God are true for those people every bit as much as they're true for anybody. And what the enemy means for evil. God will turn around and make it for our good. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Don't worry. Don't fret. Don't fear. Don't be anxious. Don't get angry. Trust me, the Lord says. Hallelujah. Trust the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. You know, there's an old song that I love very much that says, <clears throat> I don't need to understand. I just need to hold His hand. I don't ever have to ask the reason why. For I know He'll make a way Through the night and through the day I don't need to understand I just need to hold His hand I don't need to understand I just need to hold his hand. I don't need to understand what's happening. All I need to do is hold to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. All I need to do is trust him. Glory to God. He is trustworthy. You can count on him to keep his promises. All the promises of God in him, in Christ Jesus, are yea, and amen. More than trusting Him, more than doing our best not to lean upon our own understanding, there is something else we must do. In all thy ways, Proverbs tells us, acknowledge Him. You know, we love, people love to use the term fear God. You know, fear God. As though this means we ought to be in holy terror of the Lord every moment of every day. That's really not what 
the Spirit of the Lord means when the Word of God says, fear God. The term fear God means simply to acknowledge Him in all your ways. In other words, to give Him a place in your thinking. You've heard me use that definition many times before. Give Him a place in your thinking. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. When you're making decisions as a young person, when you're out in the world, when you're out at school, when you're in your first job and you're just a teenager and you're having for the first time in your life to make some tough decisions because tough choices have been offered you, do you or do you not want to begin to become sexually active? Do you or do you not want to dabble with alcohol? Do you or do you not want to uh, participate in uh, recreational drugs? And all of a sudden we're old enough and independent enough where we have to make our own choices. And how many of us, as we're making those choices, do so with mom and dad in our thought process. My mother taught me, just say no. My mother taught me, my father taught me, just turn around and run. Do whatever you got to do, but get away from it. My father has taught me that once you start a lot of times, you open a door, you can't close again. And it's easy to become addicted. It's easy to go to excess. And before too long, you wind up like Uncle So-and-so or Aunt So-and-so with a ruined marriage or with children who despise you or unable to have healthy relationships. Or families are destroyed like this family down the street or that one. How many of us, as we begin to make decisions for ourselves, we're making decisions for ourselves, but we still have mom or dad up in our thinking. That's fearing your parents. That's exactly what God asks us to do. He says, keep me in your thinking. Keep me in your thought process. When you make decisions, make those decisions with me as part of your thought process. That is exactly what the Lord says in Proverbs chapter 3. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. In everything you do and in every way you do it, acknowledge God. It's going to be easy to react and respond to things that happen in coming weeks and months. It's going to be very easy to react out of emotion, to react out of fear, to react out of anxiety. But we must be careful not to react in that fashion, but to acknowledge God in all our ways. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Keep him in your thinking. I remember years and years ago, I had pastored a church. I started a work many years ago. It was my first apostolic work. We were independent. And there was a minister at a nearby church that I had been a member of. Now, I wound up starting my third church not quite 20 miles away from where his church had been or was. But this pastor was a lot older and I loved him, thought the world of him. But people in his church, he, he had a lot of people in his church that were just not right. They didn't know how to act right. They didn't know how to behave and he never said or did anything to correct anybody or to chastise anybody or to set anybody straight. So these people just run amok. And they would say things and do things that were just so harmful to people. And man, his church would have been five times the size it was if he had been a stronger pastor and a stronger leader instead of allowing certain members of his church to just run afoul and act the way they acted. Well, when I started my third church, my first apostolic work, 
there were just a few people in his congregation. They began to go on a rampage and they started spreading rumors about me and uh, one lady that was a dear friend of mine, she was 30 years my senior, mind you. I was only in my mid-twenties and she was in her fifties. But she had come to help me. She wanted to come help me start this work. That was the only person that this pastor knew who had been in his church that came with me. And honestly, I loved her. She was a friend, but I'd have been just as happy if she just stayed put. Uh, next thing you know, there were rumors being spread that she and I were having an affair. Oh, there were rumors being spread that I was an alcoholic, which is so funny because I've never been a drinker in my life. Even when I backslid and was out of church for a couple of years, I, I never became involved in alcohol. Oh, I mean, you would not believe the rumors they started. Every time someone would begin to attend our church, who at one time had attended this other church, but they stopped attending because of these same people pulling garbage on them. And they were so thrilled to find out there was a new apostolic work just 20 miles up the road. Because for many years there hadn't been another apostolic church within literally about a 40 or 50 mile radius. So they were thrilled there was another. And they knew me and they wanted to come and be part of our church. And when they did, all of a sudden they were being harassed and they were being phone called. And there were all kind of rumors being thrown at them. And they would become so despondent and so discouraged that they'd stop coming. So I went through a lot of garbage while trying to get this work started. Finally, the opportunity made itself available for me to just leave the church and go to another city and be under. I wanted to be under a pastor who is extremely successful in apostolic ministry. And I wanted to learn from him for a while. I said, you know what, let me get under a pastor who had built a, an apostolic mega church, if you would. I mean, literally had tens of thousands of members. Now, I am not one to be impressed by numbers. I am not one to be impressed by uh, mega churches. There was a lot about his church that I didn't care for. There was a lot of show business that I didn't think was necessary. That, you know, There were a lot of things I wasn't wild about. But he was a good man. He was a sound man. He's still pastoring that same church. It's bigger than it ever was in the same city. But I wanted to go and, and I said, you know what, let me humble myself for a while. See, there's a lot of people in ministry, Tommy, who, who never for a moment stop and think that it might be wise for them to humble themselves and get under somebody who's been there and learn from them for a while. But see, I know that if I'm going to be effective in what I'm doing, somewhere along the line I've got to humble myself and learn from somebody else who's gone through it, who's been through it. So I said, I'm going to do this. Well, my friend who had come with me to start this church, she asked me, she said, well, would you mind if I continued the work here? And I said, no, that'd be fine. Well, I went to this new city and I was trying to, um, I was staying with friends and I was trying to get situated and eventually, I mean, I got a job and I started a job and I was trying to find an apartment and that sort of thing. But <clears throat> before all that could happen, uh, I went through an experience, I won't go into all the details, long story short, uh, things didn't go quite as I had planned and I called up a lady from the church that I had been pastoring and I told her, I said, listen, everything that I left at the church building in the back room for storage, I had furniture, I had housewares, everything I owned was there. The only thing I brought with me to this new city was a suitcase with clothes, my Bible, and a concordance that I won when I was 12 years old in a contest at my church, a Bible concordance. That's all I brought with me. 
when I went to this new city. And I told this lady, I said, Al, I'm kind of delayed in getting my things, but I will get there, I will get these things. And this lady said to me, Oh, Pastor, oh my Lord, there, there's been a terrible mix-up. And I said, well, what do you mean? She said, Sister Johnson sold everything that was in that room. I said, what? She said, yeah, she said that you had given permission to sell everything and use the money for the church. I said, my God, I never said a word like that. I, she never even asked me about it. I had no idea she was doing this. She said, well, nothing remains. There's absolutely nothing in that room. It was a very large room, and I mean, it was packed rafter, to, you know, with all my furniture, my belongings. So I literally lost every single thing that I owned in a moment's time. A complete shock to me. Well, I mentioned this to somebody, I forget who, and the first words off their lips were, well, you could sue her. And I stopped for a minute and I thought, and I, I looked at my friend and I said, no, I can't. I said, because the Word of God says that we're not to go at law with a brother or sister in the faith. I said, so I can't do that. You see, the Word of God said, in all thy ways acknowledge Him. Not just when it's convenient. Not just when you feel up to acknowledging God and doing things God's way. But in all thy ways acknowledge Him. So as hurt as I was and as much as I had experienced I can't even explain to you what it felt like when that happened. It felt like somebody blew a hole right through me with a high-powered rifle. I just felt this emptiness inside. Everything, Tommy, I'd ever owned, everything was gone. It's probably why I'm a pack rat to this day. But I had to acknowledge God in my response. I couldn't respond emotionally I couldn't respond angrily I couldn't respond any other way but uh, in a godly manner because that's what I've been taught to do as a child of God vengeance is mine saith the Lord I will repay the Lord's going to take care of this situation he's going to take care of me let me tell you something God has restored to me everything I lost probably fivefold at least at the moment that it happened, I could not imagine that the Lord would do this, but He has. Amen. So therefore, if you acknowledge God in all your ways, you'll be surprised how God will come through for you in the end. Amen. You'll be shocked to see how God honors His Word, and He will take care of you. He will take care of the situation. He will take care of your circumstance. If you'll acknowledge Him in all your ways. If you acknowledge Him in all your ways, there's a promise in Proverbs 3 attached to that phrase. And that promise is this, And He will direct thy paths. See, when we acknowledge God in all our ways, then He will guide us and He will direct us. If we fail to acknowledge God and we decide we're going to start leaning on our own understanding, if we're going to trust in ourselves and do things our own ways, guess what happens? You wind up wandering off the path and you're on your own. Well, I'll tell you, there are a lot of Christians in the world today, a lot of people who profess Christianity today who are on their own. They are on their own. God is no longer directing their path. The Lord is no longer guiding their steps. The Lord is no longer... The Word of God said the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Only people who have a desire to do right have their steps ordered of the Lord. No, there are a lot of people in the fundamentalist and in the evangelical camp today who claim to be followers of Christ, who claim to be Christians, and yet in reality they are on their own. 
Everything they're doing, they're doing on their own. Don't think just because a Christian is doing it that God is behind what they're doing. Don't think just because Billy Graham's son, Franklin, is saying it that God supports and endorses what he is saying. No, there's a lot of people out there professing Christ, but they're on their own. Their path is their own path. They're choosing their own way. They're not acknowledging God. They're not trusting God. I've said it many times before, the evangelical and fundamentalist camp in which I was born, I was born into that movement. I saw many, many years ago, I saw... These people don't trust God. They don't trust the Word of God. They don't believe what Scripture says. I saw this when I was in it. I said, look, they scream and they holler about abortion. They scream and they holler about gay rights. They scream and they holler about people who believe anything differently than they do. They act like they want to influence our government in such a way that we become a theocracy and there's a state-sanctioned religion. Oh, we want to make Christianity the national religion of America. Really, and which brand of Christianity would that be? Because guess what? That's the next fight you're going to have on your hands. The Southern Baptist Convention is going to say, we should be determining what, what qualifies as biblical Christianity. The Assemblies of God is going to say, no, we should determine. The United Pentecostal Church is going to say, we don't believe half of what they say, so we should determine. Honey, uh, there is an idiotic notion in fundamentalist and evangelical circles that all Christians in America believe the same things, and that is not even remotely true. There are many Christians in America who, while they may be repulsed by, or they may be, uh, they may object to abortion and what have you, they still believe as Americans that government should be secular, not religious, and therefore. Uh, give unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, give unto God that which is God's, and that I cannot uh, force my religious convictions upon someone else, and therefore this is an issue to be decided between a woman, her God, and her doctor. And government should not be involved. And yet the people who believe this way are every bit Christian. But we have those in America who, oh no, they're not Christians. If they don't believe the way we believe, then they're not Christians. Baloney. Baloney. God isn't moving fast enough. God isn't doing what we think He ought to be doing. I lean not unto thine own understanding. We need to change government. We need to elect leaders who are going to put judges in, who are going to do things the way we think they ought to be done. Uh, got news for you, honey. The same people that Donald Trump is putting into federal judgeships and the same people he's putting into the Supreme Court who are quote-unquote anti-abortion and anti-gay. Let me tell you what else those people are. They are pro-enslaving Americas and making everybody in this country as broken, as poor as can possibly be so they can line their pockets with as much money as they can lay their hands on. And if you think I'm kidding, just watch. Stupid people. They're using these issues to manipulate the religious right. They're using these issues to stir people into a frenzy and to get them to act irrationally. Well, that wouldn't happen if people trusted in the Lord with all thine heart. If they leaned not unto their own understanding. If they acknowledged Him in all their ways. Tommy, 
They couldn't be stirred into a frenzy. They couldn't be made to fear. They couldn't be made to be anxious. They couldn't be made to worry. They couldn't be manipulated by political forces and political parties. But the whole reason that they are today is because they're doing none of these things. And if they're doing none of these things, then you can rest assured they are on a path of their own making. They are not on God's path. There is no more dangerous place to be in this world than on your own path. Glory to God. There's an old song that says, I know the Lord will make a way for me. I know the Lord will make a way for me. If I live a holy life, Shun the wrong and do the right. I know the Lord will make a way for me. If I strive to do right, if I give God a place in my thinking, if I acknowledge Him in all of my ways, He will direct my path. Romans 8, 13 and 14 today tells us, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, in other words, if you let your spirit dictate what you do in your body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We've got too many unbelievers and too many people in our world today who think that everybody who claims to be a Christian is a Christian. Everybody who claims to be a son or daughter of God is a son or daughter of God. No, no, that's not at all true. The only people according to the Word of God who are genuinely children of God are those who are led by the Spirit. If you're doing things your own way and you're on your own path, you are not being led by the Spirit. And therefore, I've got news for you, honey. You are not a child of God. You can call yourself a child of God until you sprout wings and fly. It doesn't make it so any more than I can go out in the field and start eating grass and call myself a cow and make it so. No! You can act like one. You can look like one. But you are not one as long as you're following your own path, as long as you're leaning on your own understanding, as long as you are failing to acknowledge God in all that you do. Lastly today, the Word of God tells us, 1 Peter 5 and 6, and I am closing, <clears throat> Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. You know, I've explained in the past when the Word of God said, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. What that is telling us in reality, explicitly, is casting all your cares upon Him. Listen to me. Because He is your caretaker. It's His job. It's like a mother and a dad. A baby doesn't run around trying to meet its own needs because the baby knows I, I'm not able. I haven't got the ability to meet my own needs. I don't have the ability to do what needs to be done for myself. All they can do is cry. All they can do is wait on mom or wait on dad to meet their need. As children of God, we're supposed to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, casting all our care upon Him because He is our caretaker. We're supposed to be like children. Doesn't the Word of God say that as children of God, people wonder why when I'm preaching, I use the term sometimes children. I'm not saying that because you're younger than I am or you're... No, I'm reminding us collectively that we are the children of God. Sometimes we need to be reminded that we're children. We're not full-grown adults. We're not 
at the top of our game. We have not fully matured. We do not understand everything there is to understand. We are not able to do everything for ourselves that we possibly can do. And I remind the people of God this as I'm preaching. I'll say, children, listen. I want to remind you, you're a child in God's eyes. And as a child, we must rely upon Him. He is our caregiver. Everything we need, He's willing to give. But we've got to humble ourselves. What does the Word of God teach? As a little child. So the humbling of ourselves is understanding that I'm a child in God's sight. And as a child, I can't do everything. But we got people in... Christian camps around the country who are standing there saying, we can do this and we can do that and we should do this and we should do that. Um, no. You do what you know to be right. You do what you think is right. You vote the way you feel that you must vote. But in the end, it's up to God to determine the outcome. It's not up to you to try to, to, to make certain things happen. No. It's up to you to live a personal walk with God. It is up to you to live up to your convictions. It is up to you to do what you know to be right. The rest is up to God. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord says to us today, trust me. Trust me. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. The Spirit of the Lord says to you and I today, trust me. Trust me. Would you stand with me this afternoon? Amen. Amen.